I want to engage in a little uh, just career therapy with you right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Go, go on. Man, man, man. No, I mean, because, you know, I mean, I think generationally or situationally, like a lot of people in this room, we came up listening to a lot of different musics. A lot of people found their own way to get to, uh, you know, to the stage and perform. Um, but I mean, you know, your route to becoming a solo singer, composer, songwriter is preceded by these 10 years in avant-garde jazz. You know, because when I think about, you know, let's say Bad Brains, I knew they started out in DC, they were playing funk, and then they saw Bob Marley and they heard the Dead Boys, I think, in the same week. And then they said, okay, that's what we're doing. You know, or I think about Fishbone, those guys all grew up together, they got bust out. Uh, San Fernando Valley and punk rock happened and they decided to start a band and Sky and punk rock and R&B, it's all mashed up music. But it's still like, that's what, when I think all those people, that's what they all did in their 20s. In their early 20s, they made that decision, just like, bam, we're gonna do this. So I know you were hearing all these things, mm -hmm. but I'm just curious about. I, I, and I grew up yeah. in the MTV generation yeah. and uh, saw, seeing Living Color and seeing De La Soul and going to that show where they played together and they were on tour together because I lived in New York, um, and so when I moved to New York after college, you go for jobs, you know, and I saw Marlies is, is uh, listed in Marlies, Marlies, you, Marlies you, you, yeah. You, 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 and I worked with Marlies at the kitchen when I first moved to New York as a performer, singing, playing uh, handmade instruments with Cooper Moore and working with um, Lord Carlos, right, in the Feathers at the Flame. So already the one stream of being a drummer is just one stream of what I do. And when you come to New York as a performer, you have to fucking work. <laughs> I met Cooper Moore, who introduced me to David, who introduced me to Matthew, who introduced me to William, who introduced me to Roy Campbell, who introduced... But I, when I came from school, I, was, I studied with Faroe, and I studied with Jay Hogarth, I studied with Braxton, I studied with Alvin Lucier, I studied with and, and Abraham and Zinia, I studied with all, the, all these different types of sound making and music games, right? And I studied theater, and I studied dance, and I studied, you know, so, and those are all things that work in me. But when I got to New York, the brothers got to me. And god damn it, like, the first gig I played was opening for Sonic Youth at Hammerstein Ballroom. Well, I mean, That's so rad. <laughs> I was, you were I was there. And, I, and, and that is some shit to fucking learn and to stick with. And those lessons, Nobody, no drummer, no one gets that, that up close. Nobody. And that is part of the story of who I am and how I approach music and life. And it's just like what you were saying, education-wise, it's just like you can't take that away from me because that informs the choices that, that, that I make when I'm programming synthesizers, the improv improvisations that I make when I'm writing songs, and when I'm vocalizing. But these are all things that I've always been doing, playing around with drum machines and electronics, playing drums, singing, working in theater, dancing. I, 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 it's kind of like, what are we going to do with you? Like, what are we going to, yes, it's like, I, it takes time to build up all of these things, you know? And if you, as in the critical atmosphere, I'm saying this now, it's just like, if you want to hear me play drums, there are at least like 50 fucking records or something that you can go hear me go the fuck off, <laughs> you know? Now I'm concentrating on this other thing, and that's like, and that's just my move that I have to do for, my, for myself and what I want to make and create in the world because there's a 
things that need to be said in a different way and I think it's it's yeah. it's a lot like what you're saying you just cannot stop you have to keep going and um, I think like the what happens is that there's this mainstream culture floating that we think is floating above us, but is really like the lowest con common denominator that I know for myself, the, the thought was, well, that is being an artist. So, so that from, from where I was sitting, you know, as like, that's the only thing that reached me. It was like, that's what I have to do to be an artist. And I think what's inspiring about um, about Sundiata and about what you're saying too of just like you have to keep going is understanding that 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 we have to define ourselves as artists like in a different way and the economy is making us do that I mean it's making musicians do it I think maybe you know I think poets already knew this a long time ago. <laughs> um, but I think as a as a musician working in in what's kind of considered a, a mainstream genre, it, it really is this moment of like, no, you have to just keep going. You have to keep taking what you what you have at this moment, and you have to keep pushing your envelope, and you have to stop worrying about what people are saying about it, what you think people can do to help you. You just have to trust that the stuff is going, the resources are going to show up that you actually need to like take the next step. That's all you have to worry about is the next step. And I mean, the reason that um, you know we were talking about putting this panel together, part of it was you know Seku was great at not limiting himself. Like there was, he didn't, he wasn't just a poet. He wasn't just you know a musician. He wasn't just a performer. He was a lot of different things. And his ability to evolve as his expression led him was partly why I was like Guillermo. You know just having all of these different skill sets and, and bringing so many different uh, levels to performance. He's not just a drummer, not just, you know, moving it on. And like Kamara also being, you know, in this fucking awesome rock band that didn't get as big as it should and hopefully will eventually, Earl Graham, yes. And then kind of, you know, segueing in the, in the interim to um, the kind of honky-tonk country that's also phenomenal, just as a great songwriter. So just that that, and that's a very Black Rock Coalition thing too, we, we really support that idea that, you know, you can't limit creativity, whatever the color of it is, but like, you know, black folk have every right to succeed or fail in any genre as long as, you know, the, yeah, I mean, it's like if you suck, at least, you know, like, there are plenty of, plenty of white rockers who suck, who have deals and are, you know, financially successful while sucking. And, you know, it's like, everyone, it should be equal opportunity suckage. It's, 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 it's true. Yeah, you know, and it's just, it's that kind of thing where it's like, you know, they're, they're just amazing artists who aren't getting a chance because not only are they being limited by market, they're being limited by genre or limited by discipline or limited by, so, you know, it's like, you know, open, how can we open the environment so that um, people have a space to explore and then find things. I, actually, I want to come back around to several things that everyone said, but Garland, I don't want, I don't want to miss this opportunity to really kind of uh, have you share your Pilgrim's progress, you know, the music business, how you became the Garland Jeffries we know. Well, I I, um, <coughs> I was playing, in, you know, ultimately I, I started out in the village and followed really very much in Bob Dylan's uh, trail, you know, on his trail. You like like. I saw that was the way, you know, you go and play three shows a night, one at Kenny's Castaways, one at uh, Folk City, if the bitter end has a, a night, you play there. I still think you can do that sort of stuff too. And uh, uh, you keep getting better, you go home and the next day you get right in front of the mirror and work on your show, you know. and then. It's the next day. Every night was the two, three, maybe four shows. You know, I had a job as a waiter. I was a college graduate, mm -hmm. but I had a job as a waiter, and my goal was just to be a musician and write songs. That's all I wanted to do, you know? and I thought I could do it. You know? I, I had written a song in uh, uh, 67, 68 that was called. I called my first song was called Insides. That tells you the whole story in that 
I wanted to write about stuff that was in me, whether it was stuff that would bother me. I certainly had a lot, and still do have a, a lot of issues with the way people treat one another. You know, I've always wanted to see that change. I've tried to do that in my own way. Uh, you know, uh, uh, almost every album has something about race in it. It's, uh, I've become very good at that. Uh, I can deliver it, and people don't even get angry at it. You know? But they do hear it, I know they hear it. 